if there's one thing about after that drew me to it, it's that it's not perfect in any way, shape or form. Like the relationship is messy and complicated and the people in it are messy and complicated and it's just very real, I think. I think that there's certain things or events in people's lives which are really significant and which change and after they happen it changes who they are as people or it changes their essence or it changes at least certain things about them and so for me after is about the event or the thing that changes Tessa and Harden. She is so much fun and she is such a pro. She, we will be laughing about the stupidest thing, cracking up and then the next minute she'll be crying in this, doing the most emotional scene. It's, it's so great to watch someone with as much experience in the industry as her and as good at acting as I guess she is. And um, I was surprised by how much we had in common so kudos to casting because we're really, we, it does really feel like mother and daughter when we're acting together. Hardin is Tessa, the lead's love interest. And he is what is essentially, in colloquial terms, a Mr. Steal Your Girl. Um, I would say that encapsulates it pretty well, but he is, um, he is, for lack of a better word, a womanizer who changes throughout the film thanks to Tessa. I think people are drawn to the story of Hessa, Hardin and Tessa um, because A, they're completely different people um, who initially, I don't, I don't think, I mean there's obviously attraction at first sight but they don't ever know how much they're going to love each other from the start. And it's one of those great stories that you can learn to love someone and they're completely different, which makes it all the more interesting. And the fact that the relationship is demonstrated in a very real way. They don't shy away from showing things that people would often think aren't important to show, like the difficulties of love and, and intimate parts and the complicated parts and ev everything is shown. Josephine Langford plays Tessa Young and I think the mo the reason, I mean we could go on for ages, but I think her acting ability helps me so much. And the fact she's such a nice considerate person and that she, she simply just acts so well, especially in the emotional scenes and, and, and stuff, it really gives me a lot to feed off and she's just doing a great performance, she's carrying this film. I think her, her acting ability is, is the the strongest aspect she brings to this film, quite rightly. <laughs> Jenny Gage is the director, and I think the sole reason she's managed to direct us so well is the fact that we've spent enough time to get to know her. I'm at her house all the time playing Fortnite with her kids and doing my laundry there, so she's almost like a motherly figure to me, and I think it's the same with Joe. And the fact we feel so f free and able to discuss everything that we think freely and all of our visions of the film are very similar, it just makes it a very easy and practical kind of uh, relationship we have between the three of us. Anna Todd is the author of After and it's so helpful to have her on set all the time just to give us that even deeper knowledge of who the character is and how they behave and all that stuff because even more than she's ever written down is in her head about these characters. So it's great to have her to reinforce that. And also the fact that she's at the hotel with us as well is just another person who's really always there whenever we want to talk about and discuss how we should play a certain role or line or whatever it may be. Um, so helpful to have her on board. She's always everywhere, a, a phone call or 10 minute walk away. The fans are 
incredible. They're so loyal. They're so passionate. Um, you know, they make these edits online, and there's some of them are really incredible, and they really um, just, you know, believe in these characters and connect with them so much. And that's a lot of responsibility as somebody making the film, um, as somebody directing, you know, the first feature film from the after series. And, um, you know, I take inspiration. I also want to, you know, mold things so there's some surprises in the film and there's some, you know, new developments. And um, so it's, it's, it's been great. I think in this day and age, everyone has a responsibility to telling authentic, you know, inspiring stories. Even in first love is never perfect. It's never, you know, it's often messy, but that doesn't mean um, that it can't be uh, something that we learn a lot from and that is inspiring. And uh, as a female filmmaker, as a woman, uh, as a mother of a daughter, I, I think about that all the time when making any art. The f beginning was just me reading fan fiction. I've always read fan fiction from Twilight, Harry Potter, back to like live journal Hanson days. I've just always loved fan fiction. So I saw um, on Instagram where people were writing One Direction fan fiction. And I was the only one of my adult friends who liked One Direction's music. And I was like, what is this? Somebody's writing fan fiction about One Direction. And then I realized it was not only, you know, young girls, it was grown women, it was grown men, it was this whole world of fan fiction um, that I didn't know existed. So then I joined Wattpad to read it. I never thought about really writing it myself. I just wanted to read on Wattpad. And then one day I felt like I'd read everything on Wattpad, which is obviously not true because there's millions of stories, but just nothing was finished or catching my eye and I only wanted to read fan fiction about One Direction specifically. I refused to read any like published books or anything. So then I just was like, I'll just write a chapter. It was literally this random thought. Like, I'm glad I didn't think about it again. Otherwise, I would have never done it. But I was like, maybe I'll just write a chapter and entertain myself. So I did. And then um, it was about three months later when it really started picking up. It was picking up in the beginning, but it just like crashed the website and all of these things. And then um, Wattpad reached out to me about publishing and asked if I ever thought about it. And of course I hadn't because I'm like, people publish Harry Styles books, like what is that? Um, and then I went to Wattpad and then we went and met with publishers. The book went to an auction. I got to choose the editor and publishing house that I wanted, which is literally like a writer's dream come true, which before this, I thought that every writer gets to have that luxury, which is, Definitely not reality, unfortunately. And Simon Schuster picked it up, and here we are. <laughs> they call themselves afternators. In the beginning, they called themselves toddlers, but we were like, well, let's not do that, because it's like, yeah. Um, so afternators stayed, and then in Spanish, they call themselves afterianas. Um, which is really cute, obviously. Um, and their influence has just been, one, just kind of like this sea of fish that's like a friend for me. Um, their influence from the comments in the beginning just making me write the next chapter. Like, I can't wait for the next chapter, or if you don't update, I'm going to never read this again, or I'm gonna find it where you live, or what, just like the most passionate. Um, but they really, having all these people say like, I need another chapter, another chapter, really did help me write so fast. That's I think the reason why I wrote a million words in a year, because I didn't even know how many words I was writing. But there's just something about this positive group of people who just want to read it just because they want to know what happens. And it felt like they were as much owner of the story as I was because we were doing it together. The story of after really the short version is just two unlikely people, one college freshman named Tessa Young who comes in a very tropey way from a sheltered life, single mother, um, kind of struggling to get by. Their goal was to always have her be in school, get to college, have a career. That's the whole goal. And then you have Hardin Scott who doesn't really have any goals. He know he's smart. He's like gifted in that way where he just kind of skated through. Um, but he was very 
angry, kind of lost person. And they're both lost in their own way. She thinks that she is an adult and she's not. And he thinks that he is an adult and he's not. And they just make a lot of mistakes together and separately until they finally figure it out. To me, it's just who these people are after they meet each other and how every little thing, every choice you make, every person you meet can change you in some way. And for me, it just was how they are after each other. Even if you've never heard of this before or me or read any of my books or any books, I think you'll just get that same feeling of the old time love story from Pride and Prejudice, from Wuthering Heights, from She's All That, even Cruel Intentions. Um, I think it has that nostalgic feeling of a love story, but very modern um, and painful and angsty and happy. Um, and I think if you have heard of me and have read my books and are wondering what you're going to see, you're going to see the same story that you loved um, just with a couple surprises in there that I think you'll really love. And I hope that you'll even love the movie just as much, if not more, as the books. Hi guys, here's today's daily fact. If you're looking for some romance in 2019, there are some unmissable screen gems such as Someone Great, available on Netflix and starring Gina Rodriguez. It will be set in New York City, while on the other side of the pond there will be Last Christmas, set in London and starring Amelia Clarke, our beloved Mother of Dragons from Game of Thrones. Remember to click below to subscribe on the side for more great content.